TitleMatchNetwork.com. You see Steve Austin as a major superstar back then? Did you see it? Throw Without a doubt, you can ask him. Yeah. I mean, he knew I knew. I, I knew him and Dustin. And this was not Dustin's father talking. This is the guy running the company. Right. So these fucking guys, both of them took different paths, you know. But uh, 20 minute Broadway in Chicago uh, with Austin and Dustin. I sat in the back and watched it. And some other guys watched it with me. I said, man, they were, they were niched together, never got to work together. You know what I mean? Never right. got to program together. Not as Dustin Rhodes and the tights and, you know, right. it was that. Uh, there was a, they had a niche together that was just, you know, it was it was perfect. And then when Austin went up there with the DiBiase thing, I thought it was, but the most creative genius of our time in our sports entertainment industry, Vince McMahon Jr. Period. Besides me, that's a good question. Here we go. Besides me, uh, what was it like to fight Vince head on in the eighties? It was fun because you'd go to bar, you would go to Philly. We would be in the Civic Center, and they would be at the Spectrum. We started with twelve hundred people or nine hundred people in the Civic Center. Pretty soon we got eight thousand. We're busting balls, the Warriors, and you know, and uh, uh, everybody there. We're busting balls in that building. <laughs> and we go to Marriott. They'd close the room off, and we'd all sit back there together. You know what I mean? WWF. Right. And, I was ever and, and yeah, in WA and. Uh, Crockett. And it was good. It was a war. And you always wondered what they were doing. You know what I mean? We couldn't get in their buildings. You know? Right. We would get one of their buildings and do good. We would get a building in Pittsburgh and do the shit. Except for the record to date. In Pittsburgh Arena was me and the boss man. Me and Big Bubba in the cage. Scalping tickets. That's when we finally turned. And there I was again. Okay, well, that's Dusty Rose. But who in the, who in the hell do you think Big Bubba put... All them people in the building. How did you think they got in the building? Right. It was a package that I put with with you. It was a package. But then there's a match that there's all, there's something up here at the end that they would die to see. You know, that's Limp Dick Biscuit, Limp Biscuit, right. Limp Biscuit, <laughs> who are great kids. But they that's them here, and they might have four other bands here. Doesn't mean they're worse than them, but there's somebody that you want to see. So that, that was a turning point for the company, the Pittsburgh show. Uh, and I think if we hadn't tried to run the whole world, we would have probably still been there, you know, without the move to Texas and everything. But uh, it was, uh, and Vince was uh, conversations back and forth. We always kept in touch. Uh, Junior and myself we grew up to business, same age. We grew up together. Uh, I was a star for him. Uh, so we kept, we kept in touch as we still do today, you know. Even when you competed, you kept in touch? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was not a, it was not a like, uh, you know, how you doing or whatever. Not, not much was ever said about the business. Right. Know? And uh, he had a, uh, a great ability to make you feel bad, you know what I mean? Because of how, you know, because he just kicked your ass right. without saying it, you know, that's just the way it was. But, uh, yeah, it was great. What about your uh, professional rivalry, I guess, with uh, in the 80s with Hogan? You guys were both top baby faces of uh, both companies. It, I magged him, I think. Uh, Terry, you know, he had the, he had the, you know, that time it kicked in. I remember seeing the story on the, in, uh, in Bill Aptooth Magazine, Wrestling Illustrated, I guess, or whatever it was, that had the picture of him and Hogan on, on the cover. And I said, there they are. You know, this is, uh, and that's why I was wanting somebody else to do more. Right. See, and that goes back to me again. All was me, 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 and that's not true. I just, I just, I had just signed uh, Marlon Brando for this, for this studio. You know, Jesus. Right. You know, so, so yeah. But, but he got the, he got, he got all of the play because of New York, because of Vince, because of the shows that he was on, and we were a Southern Company, and we had Rhubarb Jones or Rhubarb. Whoever doing the ring announcing, you know what I mean? We had the greatest announcer in the world, Gordon Soul, are the are the anchor. But uh, we had some good things going. But he he outran me on the on the out of out of business side, you know, in the entertainment world side, and that was Vince. Right. Vince put him there, so I just stayed wrestling arena, wrestling arena, and yeah, I was a big baby face, and 
and but uh, I never obtained. I never got to that to where he was because of the outside stuff that he did. What do you think you could have done differently to go head to head with Vince and maybe come out on top? I think I think here's the, here's the three things that 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 we didn't do that would have we would have come out on top without a doubt. Yes, being a Southern company, Crockett, being in the South, we had to we had to use our head. We had an and uh, a guy that uh, the tax guy, you know, our accountant, kind of running the business side. One guy. Been there with the old mom and pop organization when they were mid Atlantic, right? Never knowing the expansion was going by him, and he was reading the numbers and couldn't believe it. He didn't put up a red flag and say, You need to get rid of one of them planes. Mm -hmm. You know, what I mean, he didn't do none of that. And I blame him for, for all that. But we needed to hire a marketing a PR company out of New York City or LA. And Magnum and Flair should have been on every Johnny Carson show, every movie, everything, like they're doing now. Right. They should have been on all of that. And if Vince, that's the word, the, the, the two logos, WWF, right? NWA. Wrestling fan knew NWA. The world knew WWF. Sports Illustrated. I don't care if I have to buy it to get on there. I'm getting on the cover. I'm doing this. So first was recognition, which they ran off and left us. We could not get recognized out of the NWA syndrome as we're going to wrestle for an hour and you're going to entertain us for an hour. You know what I'm saying? Right. Vince entertained me for an hour. He entertained us. He entertained the world. Still doing it. We were wrestling. We were wrestling. And I was wrestling. We were wrestling for an hour. And we were great. We were good. The world was not buying that. They were buying the wrestling and entertainment more. So marketing and exposure of name recognition. Every announcer at every football game would say, boy, that fight between them two football players, John Madden said, that looks like something from WWF. Every time they opened their mouth, it wasn't TBS or WCW or NWA. That, and still today they do that. All right. You know? So that's recognition. That's the thing. I think... He didn't have a contractual agreement. I think the thing that hurt us worse than anything else was when we went to the contracts. So we started paying guys that were working their ass off to make a hundred. If you, this is low, but I'm just going to use an example. Me and you and one of Robbins, okay? We make a hundred bucks a piece. We're on top. We're back there next Friday. We work our angle, okay? We come back and we make 200. The house is up. That's the way it should be, period. That's the way Vince kept it for a long time. Right. That's the way it was, not us. Because we didn't want to go to Vince. We're going to give a bunch of guys that can't hold their jock strap up with our laser shoots, shoots up a bunch of money. So what do you do right away? Your work rate goes down. Your uh, injuries become more and more because you know you can be off. And uh, if I was injured and I didn't make a show, I didn't get paid. And somebody else took my spot on top. Right. If they could. And that was the way it, that's the way it should be. Yeah, I want to change. Bring your attorneys right now and everything. That's got to be a bottom line. You work for this money. You know, it's, uh, it's, 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 so that's two. That's, uh, that I think really hurt us. Okay. I think third thing that hurt the com and competing wise was of my three is, TBS, not them hurting us. Right. They were great. I think the fasana that he had, I don't even know if that's a word, it might mm -hmm. be a rodism, of the, uh, of it being a, uh, if it isn't, we'll put it in our book. <laughs> it, it is that, uh, TBS was a Southern company. All Vince had to do was say wrestling. He wrestles, and he does it all the time on the interview. Every time he mentions Turner, so Junior would say that. So right away, the world would say, "L.A. the hip people." You know what I mean? Bellucci, mm -hmm. these guys. You know, Jesus. You know, the late John Bellucci. Yeah, they were wrestling down there in the South. You know, so it became the state South. 
the bigness of it goes back to number one, recognition of the product. Recognizing the product, associating the product with a certain amount of people. Stand back headache powders. I was the first spokesman, but stand back didn't go to LA. It didn't go. It was a Southern company. They, they, I made money with that though, and I took it and it worked, but it didn't go, it didn't go over. Now then, Bayer, Excedrin, Tylenol, me on a commercial nationwide recognition. It's where this guy at. He's with the WCW, the NWA. Right. You know, but I don't think they will ever, we, if we don't work for him, will ever overcome the WWF because there's a lot of circuses, but Barnum and Bailey is a big one. There's a lot of, uh, of, uh, dancers and, and, and as far as, uh, uh, ball ballerinas, but Baryshnikov is the one. Uh, when you say anywhere in the world, how did I overcome that? Cause I went all over the world. I was in Vince. I was in New York. In LA, not just on TBS. TBS put me there. So when you say, no matter what they say, and the, my biggest gripe with doing documentaries is they leave out the 70s. It pisses me off. They leave out the little dukes. They leave out the races. They leave out the 70s because they're only dealing right now with what they think is numbers. Right. We'll talk with Eric and we'll talk with Vince. We use these guys on this. We'll talk a little bit about the old and we'll talk about with Dad being a great hooker. Right. You know what I mean? And all this shit. Well, they leave out the air that set the table that made all this thing happen. You know, the 70s into the early 80s. They leave it out. Now, one has come to the house to interview me with you guys. Now, one has said, man, this is a real story here. This is a guy that was as powerful as anybody at the time and ran this country and this business. And everything that uh, most of the 80% of the shit we see, name-wise, recognition-wise with WCW, from matches to inventions, he did that. He invented the the the... Forget the five minute get over match. He invented the the video magic of getting a guy over before he got there. So that pisses me off because they don't they don't they don't recognize that. And I blame WCW or WWF or whoever that's saying, hey man, the guy you need to talk to is Dusty Rose. You know what I mean? Right. Because he can call you and get all the tapes he wants. If we can put together some for him, you know what I mean? So it kind of pisses me off to where to where the that lack of respect, you know, and, and lack of respect for me is is the, the worst thing that. That really turns me off about the industry, uh, and uh, so so the, them things. Without the recognition, we could not compete with him. I got off on a tangent on something else because I really hate them them things. I mean, I see him there, you know. And it's not oh, you could test me. Yeah, I want to see myself on there. There's not one tape of me wrestling on there. Mm -hmm. On the ones, you know what I mean? And we see we've seen twenty thousand uh, Bret Hart videos mm -hmm. in the last. Two years, you know, not lately. I'm not talking about this right. year, but before you would see, you know, so somebody, he's somebody smart enough to sell in his, his, his stuff. You know right. what I mean? So anyway. Title